Hello again. I hope you've enjoyed learning a bit about three-dimensional topological insulators. I wanted to give you sort of a different picture uh, building on some of the things that you've now learned. So, as I said before, you can view the metallic surface state of a 3D topological insulator as half of an ordinary metal, and maybe the most quantifiable meaning of that is that if you put it into a quantum Hall state, a non-interacting quantum Hall state, instead of seeing integers, uh, that is, instead of seeing sigma xy equal to e squared over h times an integer, you see half integers. Uh, and there's actually quite a deep significance to that half integer, and it goes back to something that particle physicists like Frank Wilczek thought about in the 1980s. Uh, here's the basic idea. A Hall effect is an electromagnetic response. You apply an electric field along X, and you get a current along Y. Uh, and it turns out that a Hall effect at the surface of a material is precisely equivalent as an electromagnetic response to an E dot B, that is electric field dot magnetic field term in the bulk of the material. Uh, terms of that form are sometimes known as axion electrodynamics. And if you're wondering what's special about E dot B instead of E cross B or some other quadratic term. Uh, e dot B, if I write that in terms of the vector potential A of, again, ordinary Maxwell electromagnetism, uh, it's a total derivative, which is a sign that E dot B must have a surface interpretation, and indeed that surface interpretation is as a quantum Hall layer at the surface. So the deep fact about E dot B terms uh, which people had thought about a long time ago, is that it turns out there's a sense in which a time reversal invariant material can have two possible coefficients of the E dot B term. You might think it could only have one, namely zero, because an E dot B term is odd under time reversal. The electric field is even, the magnetic field is odd, the product is odd. Uh, but there's a subtlety, which is that for somewhat deep reasons, the coefficient in front is periodic. Uh, you can think of it as an angle. And that means that there are actually two possibilities that are consistent with this angle theta being equivalent to minus theta. One possibility is zero, but the other possibility is theta equal to pi, because as an angle, as an angle pi is equal to minus pi. Uh, so it's kind of known a long time ago that, in a sense, there should be two kinds of time reversal invariant solids. There should be those that had theta equal to zero and integer quantum Hall surfaces. Uh, the simplest case would be that there's no quantum Hall at the surface, just zero, and theta equal to pi materials, which would have half integer quantum Hall at the surface. So maybe a deep way to look at what the 3D topological insulator is, is that it is a theta equal to pi material. Uh, actually, it's a bit ambiguous which one is zero and which one is pi. All we can say is that at the boundary between a theta equal to zero material and a theta equal to pi material, there are an odd number of Dirac fermions if it's gapless, and a half integer quantum Hall state if it's gapped. Now, as an example of kind of a spin-off from topological insulators, people have thought about all kinds of magnetoelectric effects for many years, uh, E dot B, E cross B, etc. Uh, so it's a bit of a surprise that the E dot B one has kind of a topological interpretation, and that motivated uh, we and other people to think about how can you calculate the electromagnetic response, specifically this magnetoelectric response of a bulk material in terms of the electronic structure. And the answer to that is quite beautiful. Uh, it turns out that just as you can understand the integer quantum Hall effect as a topological invariant from the Berry phase of the electron wave functions, in other words, it's an invariant that's computed by how the wave functions evolve as I move through the Brillouin zone, the same thing is true for the magnetoelectric effect. And to be precise, the magnetoelectric effect is the first and so far I think the only example where a physical observable is controlled by the non-abelian part of the Berry phase. And what I find kind of beautiful about that is normally condensed matter physics, we get to use the Schrodinger equation, Maxwell's equations, you know, a beautiful abelian gauge theory, but we don't have to worry about QCD or the weak interactions. There is no microscopic non-abelian gauge field. Uh, but it turns out that every time someone has measured a magnetoelectric effect going back to the 50s and probably longer, they've been measuring the non-abelian part of the Berry connection, at least that's a contributing part to what they measure. Uh, they've been measuring a non-abelian gauge field without even knowing that. So it's kind of confirmation that if there's a beautiful enough structure 
like non-abelian gauge theory, in one part of theoretical physics, uh, it will somehow eventually appear in another part of theoretical physics, and that's quite encouraging. Bye for now.